The mysterious and tragic life of Kim Jong-nam. It can't have been easy being the son of late former North Korean leader Kim Jong-il and then apparently losing favor. But working with the CIA, as recent reports claim, here we wade through the intrigue and attempt to present a portrait of the man whose life was cut short at an airport in the Malaysian capital just over two years ago. Despite being, and in fact most likely because he was, the half-brother of current North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. I'm Alex Jensen for North Korea Now. First, let's explore who was Kim Jong-nam. Kim Jong-il's eldest son, albeit born in 1971 to a mistress, he was kept out of the spotlight initially for this reason. Then schooled abroad before returning to the North in the late 1980s, his path as heir apparent looked clear when he took up a senior state role in 1998, joining his father on a trip to China in early 2001. But later that year, the story unravels as he was arrested in Japan while traveling on a fake passport, according to his own account, to Tokyo Disneyland, a symbol of the US, the enemy. The embarrassment was apparently so great that his father called off a planned trip to China, though it's generally accepted he made several secretive trips to Japan since the mid-1990s. By 2003, he was in Macau, China's answer to Las Vegas, which fed Kim's reputation as a tattooed international playboy. He seems to have been mainly based in Macau through the early 2000s, apparently raising a family there, although he had at least six children by at least two women. We know he was also in Macau in 2010 when he spoke to the Associated Press there, rejecting speculation that he might move to Europe. But he was spotted at various times elsewhere, including mainland China. And he even reportedly flew from Macau to Pyongyang when his father died in late 2011. But we didn't see him in the funeral footage. The China connection also fueled speculation and perhaps paranoia in Pyongyang that Beijing might be preparing to back Kim Jong-nam as North Korean leader should the need arise. For example, if there was ever a collapse of Pyongyang's regime, which was considered a possibility when power was passed to the relatively young Kim Jong-un. But even if he had China's support, Kim Jong-nam's life was in danger long before he was actually killed. There was an attempt on his life in Budapest as early as 2006, as he said to have appealed to his half-brother in 2012 after surviving another murder attempt, when he was eventually killed in Kuala Lumpur, a toxicologist testified he was carrying with him 12 vials of general purpose antidote for nerve agents. Yet he died after having the banned chemical VX smeared on his face by two women who claim they were duped. North Korea has never admitted to being involved. But Pyongyang had more motivation than most. He was repeatedly critical of the North's regime, and it would not have gone down well that a member of the Kim family would be so open with the media. He himself claimed he lost favor not so much because of the Disneyland incident, but because he advocated reforms. But even more intriguing is the claim he was providing intelligence to agents in South Korea and the US. The Wall Street Journal recently garnered much attention by citing a person knowledgeable about the matter as stating that Kim Jong-nam met on several occasions with CIA operatives. The story is supported by a newly published book by Washington Post correspondent Anna Fifield, who points out that Kim Jong-un would have considered talking to American spies a treacherous act. It may even have been the case that Kim Jong-nam had been in Malaysia to meet his CIA contact at the time of his death and that he was carrying a backpack containing $120,000 in cash. We can speculate that he needed money to support a life that was constantly under threat, but ultimately, that's what we're forced to do with so many details of his secretive existence. Speculate.